This first one that we found, um, it was complete. It hadn't been drilled, and it almost looks like a little stone that had some scratch marks on it. Um, and so we were pretty excited about it, but, um, but we, when we got really excited is when we found this second one with the drilled hole and the much more complicated etchings on it. And then that's when we realized that we really had something, something unique and something interesting. And then uh, through the course of the week, as we continued to excavate, uh, we found these other two items. And yeah, it just started to really fall into a pattern. And, um, and one of the exciting things is that we've only opened up a, a really small amount of ground at the site. So the fact that we've only opened up a little bit and we found four of these items, that indicates that there's probably a lot more there and there's something really significant happening at the site. So. So where do you go from here? What kind of questions do you have right away that you want to try um, to find answers? Well, the first question we have is, um, has anything like this been found in Alaska or perhaps similar sites even um, across the Bering Strait in Siberia? So that's the first question we'll address is um, to comb back through the literature and see if archaeologists in the past excavations have found similar artifacts. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there on that. Um, and then we'll also want to kind of comb through the literature for other like similar artworks or similar artifacts that have similar etchings and, and try to figure out maybe what that means and then um, also see if these were a functional artifact or purely artistic or perhaps ornamental or, or what, so yeah. So petroglyphs in Alaska that doesn't sound like there is much, you know, it's not uh, something I think, you know, the pictures don't come to my mind. There's a lot known down in the south, southeast Alaska and like around the Juneau area and further south, like northwest coast, but in terms of the Brooks Range up in northwest Alaska, yeah, it's pretty rare. And that's one of the other uh, main goals with the site, too, is so we're out not only documenting the petroglyphs, but we're also out excavating, trying to get samples for radiocarbon dating so we can get a better idea of when people are at these sites, too. Do you have any idea of, of what, um, what yeah, time? I mean, people generally refer, given the house features that are there, um, it's, people refer to it as the late prehistoric, so about the last thousand years, probably somewhere within that time frame. But, but yeah, you never know for sure until you, until you actually get the date. So tell me, what do you know about the site? You mentioned that it was an important place or a place that you wanted to go to, that there was a project involved. Mm -hmm. What's there? So there's these um, groups of house pits, which are basically depressions in the ground. Um, so when people would occupy these sites, they would kind of dig out a hole and set their foundation for their house, so it's semi-subterranean, so it's kind of half-buried house for um, insulation purposes in the winter. So one of the sites, there's 30 of these house pits, along with large boulders, boulder stone foundations that have these, um, they're like foundation rocks that would have been built into the house, and some of these boulders had petroglyphs on them, and that was one of the main things drawing us back. Um, so one of the sites is really big with 30 of these house depressions, and the other site's a little bit smaller with only about 10 of them. And where is it geographically, and what kind of terrain is there? Right in the middle of the Brooks Range, really north of the Noatak River um, in northwest Alaska. So it's about a about 100 miles northeast of the village of Kotzebue, which is right on right on the Chukchi Sea, the Bering Sea. So, yeah, way up in northwest Alaska. Yeah. And how did you get there? Uh, well, we flew commercial flights to Kotzebue, and then we chartered with a smaller operator out of there in a float plane, a Cessna 185 on floats. It's pretty out there and hard to get to, so that's one of the reasons archaeologists haven't been back since the sites were originally found like 20 years ago. It's, it's pretty expensive to get out there, so... Park Service finally secured funding and then enlisted our help to get out there and, and do the work. So, What's next? Where do these little baggies go next? <laughs> well, we'll keep them here at the museum for now. Um, since it was excavated on Park Service land, eventually they'll end up at the regional curation facility in Anchorage because um, they house all of their own artifacts down there. Um, but we'll hang on to them for now and um, we'll get to do some more research and we'll catalog. We'll do all the cataloging for the park. So we've got one more lake to visit next summer, so we'll probably wait until after next summer and then get everything cleaned up and cataloged and then ship it all down. And what are some of the other items then that you, uh, that you have? Well, you can see we found a lot of faunal remains, which um, basically is just the remains of the animals that people were eating, and primarily it's caribou. But one interesting thing is we were finding a lot of bird bone, which is pretty neat. Um, another big th question we have with these sites is when people were living there. And so based on the animal remains, a lot of times you can kind of get a time frame for when people were there, especially when there's a lot of migratory waterfowl that's only available in the summer. Whereas caribou, it's more indicative of like a fall, winter camp. So the early signs are that perhaps people were, were living here all year round.